Hello, everyone, and welcome to this episode of Stories from the Field with English Language Programs. My name is Kim Gomez, and I was an English Language Fellow in Uganda, and I'm now a Marketing and Outreach Coordinator with the program here in Washington, D.C. I'm joined today by Ramin Yazampana. Hi, Ramin. Hello, Kim. How are you? Good, thank you. How are you? I'm wonderful. Thanks for being here today. And um, could you introduce yourself a bit and tell us where were you a fellow? Sure. So uh, my name, as you said, is Ramin Yazdanpana. Uh, I was a fellow uh, 2017 to 2018 in uh, Vietnam. And I was also a specialist, um, I believe a year after that, uh, a year or two after that, uh, uh, virtual specialist uh, in Nepal. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm an educator uh, and I'm currently living in uh, Bodrum, Turkey. Great, well, thank you so much again. And we are excited to hear your story titled Musical Crossroads. So I'll hand it over to you. All right, thank you, Kim. So it's been a few years now, but as I remember, it was a Saturday on a typical hot and humid summer afternoon when I received the phone call. I was playing my didgeridoo and handpan, instruments that were, well, instrumental to my well being. Being a fellow often comes with stints of alone time, and playing music has always been a way for me to relax, reset, and reconnect. My instruments also help to create a connection with others across languages and cultures through curiosity and our shared love of music. It was my relo, Diane Millar, who called. Hearing from her was always a welcome event. Diane was more a cool aunt than a boss or a supervisor. You know she was always there for you while still giving you the space to make your own plans and mistakes. She called to see if I would be open to presenting at the American Center in Ho Chi Minh City. In addition to my role as a lecturer at Tainwen University, I also participated in facilitating teacher training workshops and served as a guest lecturer in rural middle schools. As much as I absolutely loved working with the students and teachers at the university, opportunities for educational and cultural exchange outside of the classroom offered a welcomed and different experience. Tainwen is in northern Vietnam, so many of my assignments were naturally located in the northern region. Presenting in Ho Chi Minh City offered the opportunity to connect with Southern Vietnam. In some ways, the differing perspectives throughout the history of the North and South of Vietnam are similar to the history between the North and South of the US. The name of the city itself is evidence of this. Ho Chi Minh City being the name given after the Vietnam War or American War as it is known in Vietnam and Saigon, the name of the city before the war. I was curious to explore the similarities and differences, meet the people, taste the food, and expand my understanding of this beautiful and burgeoning country. As a fellow, I could present on really anything that might further the mission of the program. For me, this was a golden opportunity to present on what is, in my view, one of the greatest and most beautiful strengths of the US, our multicultural musical identity. Also, knowing what I came to find out about Vietnamese, they absolutely love karaoke. So it couldn't be a total disaster, right? The challenge was of course the difficult task of deciding what music and what musicians to focus on given the limited time I had to present. What genres and musicians could provide at least a general understanding of US history, society, and culture. So I developed the following criteria to help with my selection process. One, they were a US American artist. Two, they are considered one of the best in the genre. Three, they had a profound cultural impact. Four, there needed to be representation of male and female artists. And five, I had to personally love their music. I also felt that a focus on African American artists was appropriate. Much of the musical foundations of US American music was built and cultivated by African American artists and has created and inspired many musical genres, such as gospel, country, 
blues, jazz, rock and roll, funk, soul, pop, and hip hop. This was also an opportunity for me to learn from the audience, specifically how music and their opinions has impacted culture and society in Vietnam. As a fellow, I always wear the hats of English language teacher and cultural ambassador. So I tried to provide opportunities to expand both language and cultural competence. This all informed my presentation, Musical Crossroads, exploring language, history, and culture through the music in the US. The space at the American Center was beautiful, with natural light filling the room, illuminating the beautiful faces in the packed auditorium. The mural backdrop of Martin Luther King and his words, I have a dream, created a setting that inspired. And the didgeridoo and hand pan I set up on stage had the audience curious to know what these strange in instruments were. After introducing myself and projecting an overview of the presentation, I asked everyone to stand up, find a partner, introduce yourself, and name a musician who you feel has had a positive impact on music, culture, and society. Lucky for me, the audience was game and the room quickly filled with the sounds of conversation and laughter. Transitioning back to their seats, it was time for the first musical ambassador, one of the most iconic and loved musicians worldwide, the one and only Sachmo, also known as Louis Armstrong. Born and raised in one of the most multicultural cities in the US, New Orleans, Louisiana, Armstrong was an American trumpeter, composer, singer, and actor. He was also one of the first truly popular African-American entertainers whose skin color was secondary to his music in an America that was extremely racially divided at the time. I handed out worksheets with a jigsaw activity and asked them to work with their neighbor to complete the missing lyrics. In unison, we then sang to Louis Armstrong's 1967 studio recording of what a wonderful world. I see trees of green, red roses too. I see them blue for me and you. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. After listening to Miles Davis's meditative So What off the album Kind of Blue and singing together to Nina Simone's powerful and uplifting song, Ain't Got No, I Got Life, our time together was coming to an end. I wanted to conclude the presentation with a personal touch and introduce the strange and sacred instruments before us, the Australian Aboriginal didgeridoo and handpan drum. Providing a brief description of each instrument, I discussed how music and these instruments have been used to connect to our inner selves, to nature, to each other, and to express gratitude to life and for the present moment. Close your eyes, if you would like, and focus on your breathing. Listen to the sounds around you. Try not to judge them as good or bad. Just listen. Relax your whole body, starting from your toes to the top of your head. Relax and feel the music. Observe your thoughts and how you feel, but always come back to the sound and to your breath. I'll always be grateful for my time as a fellow and for having the opportunity to deepen my ever evolving understanding of myself, others, and life in general. Thank you. Thank you so much, Remy, for sharing that story. And just what an example of language teaching cultural exchange, uh, like you said, but also um, entwining your personal interest in love, but also you saw that you, your Vietnamese counterparts also loved music. So putting that all together to create this workshop. And so 
again, just thank you for sharing that story with us today. Uh, so you mentioned that you taught at a university. You also gave workshops at American Spaces um, in your region, which many fellows do. Um, so why did you choose this specific workshop and story to share with us today? So I think I chose this specific story uh, because it kind of reflects uh, maybe a part of being a fellow that um, maybe not everyone's aware of. Uh, I think we we understand that we're going to be teaching at a at a school, typically a university. Uh, but being a fellow, you know, you're not just a fellow when you're in the classroom. <laughs> when you're a fellow, you're a fellow 24 seven. And uh, this includes, you know, your time just being out in public, engaging with people, engaging with the community. And so this was an opportunity for me to to engage with with the broader community. Uh, to engage with people who weren't necessarily uh, my students or, or my colleagues and and really for me to just kind of immerse myself in cultural exchange you know integrate uh, language learning um, but also and and you know cultural exchange uh, yes for me to kind of share uh, aspects of, of American culture but just as much for me to to learn you know from the audience uh, about in this case Vietnam so, um, you know, I think it's it's an opportunity to kind of in these spaces, in these in these American spaces uh, to to share who we are, you know, as as Americans and to create a, a kind of wider understanding of of who Americans are, you know, who we look like, who we sound like, you know, what our names are. And so that was also a big um, part of my, I guess, mission, you know, personal mission uh, as a fellow was being a Cuban Iranian American, you know, presenting that, you know, and celebrating the, the diversity, as I said, of what I think is, is our greatest strength, you know, as Americans is our diversity. Thank you. That's, that's so great. And it's such a good reminder. I think fellows uh, think about fellowship a lot or their fellowship a lot as the, the project goals, which is, which is so important, but you are a fellow 24 seven, like you said, which is a good thing. It means that you can bring a lot of yourself into uh, the community projects or workshops that you're doing, but also hopefully get really involved in the community where you are and meeting others and getting involved in their interests and their, their, um, you know, weekend activities and so forth. Um, thank you again for that. Uh, so, if you could describe your fellowship in three words, what would those words be? Um, okay, so I would say the first would be challenging um, because you know a challenge is what I was looking for and my fellowship, and it's definitely a challenge is is what I got. So um, challenging. The next is monumental. Um, because of the memories that I have, you know, and I will always have uh, from being a fellow, a fellow and how remarkable, you know, they are um, and impactful, right? Because, you know, being in a, a fellow has just been such a tremendous impact on my life. It continues to be such a tremendous impact on my life. Uh, this is a great example of it, just continuing to connect with my my fellow fellows, you know, in our community uh, of fellows, our community of practice and staying engaged and, and getting to kind of share that experience. Great, thank you. So if you out there, if you thought this sounds really interesting and something that you would love to do, um, please check out our website, www.elprograms.org. You can also subscribe to this, uh, to our uh, channel uh, to follow along with more videos to come. And another big thanks to you, Ramin, for sharing your story and your experience with us today. It's my pleasure. And thank you, Kim, for being such a wonderful hostess. Thank you. All right. Bye, everyone.